So let's say you're not in love with your score or you're not in love with the way that test day went for you and you're thinking about retaking. Retaking is more common than ever, in part because having multiple scores on record does not really put you at any kind of disadvantage. Of course, if you have three or four or five scores on record, that will start to look a little bit less good than having only, let's say, two, but not a big deal. Law schools, like I said before, they only consider the highest score. That's all that goes into their equations. So having multiple scores is not a reason not to retake. If it's going to be your fourth take, that's totally fine. I also get a lot of questions from students about applying later in the cycle. Let's say that you were taking the LSAT in the summer or the fall, and now you're pushing back to retake in the winter, or you're pushing back your applications to retake in the spring, and you're worried about what happens when you're taking the LSAT the same calendar year that you'd want to start law school. Good news is that applying early matters much less than it used to. Law schools are deferring and waitlisting more and more applicants because they want to see who else will come along. And that is due in part to the recent decline in the number of students taking the LSAT, applying to law school. So they're waiting. They're waiting and they're delaying. And so for that reason, there's not really much of a disadvantage, if any, to applying relatively later in the cycle. What you do want to think about, though, is when you're retaking, what will you do differently this time around? Did you take several practice exams before taking the LSAT officially on test day? Of course, doing those exams would not be enough. You'd also have to review them in detail. You also, of course, want to make sure that you were using actual official recent LSAT prep tests and that you were using top quality LSAT materials, not the random books you might find on a bookstore shelf. So think about what you can do differently with materials, what you can do differently with your approach, what you can do differently in terms of the time that you invest in your studying. You also want to look at what may not have gone well in your prep up to this point or what may not have gone well on test day itself. Did you have a test day score drop or do you, do you expect to have one? Maybe you did not properly simulate LSAT test day conditions. Maybe nerves, anxiety, or stress got the better of you. And so you want to look at what strategies and techniques, what tools you can use this time that you didn't use before in order to make the most of your LSAT retake experience. You also want to look at your predicted score versus your actual score. Did you score right on target with what your average was and you just want to do better? Or did you have a drop and then maybe your practice tests were not relatively indicative of what your actual exam day experience was? So look at all of those factors. You want to consider all of those factors and you want to make sure that you're putting in the time. And so if there are holidays or vacations or family obligations or work obligations between now and your next test date, you might want to push it back even further. Or if life is just going to be really busy and complicated over the next several months, maybe you don't want to retake and maybe the score that you have now is going to be it for you and that's fine with you. Or maybe you want to delay an entire year so that you'll be able to put in the time. So think about what your next few months looks like between now and the next LSAT administration or two, and then think about what you could do differently over that period. And structure your life in such a way that if you do want to retake, you'll be able to surround yourself with the resources and the tools and the people potentially, whether it's tutoring or coaching or a class or a study group, in order to set yourself up for success on your retake.